vest. He is a cover boy, if you will, St. Louis Magazine cover story. Uh, he is also a cardiologist with SSM Health, SLU Hospital, and SLU Care. Good morning, Dr. Michael Lim. Good morning. Good Just morning. remember, in, it's 11 o'clock Central on Saturday, but where you'll be, it'll be noon. Noon Central. So that'll be a little more acceptable? No, it'll be, it'll be the same exact time. <laughs> I'm a Big Ten grad. I understand. I understand time zones. And look at you trying to trying to trick me. Yeah, well, that's confusing. We wanted to get you one of these Apple watches to wear between yeah. 11 a.m. and about 2:30 p.m. Central Time to see what your heart rate would be, <laughs> as as the Nebraska Cornhuskers would be up at the big house yes. trying to get their first win in the season. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that one hurts too. Uh, get them early. Get them now because you're not going to get them later. All right, let's talk about this Apple Watch because. Um, lots of talk about the Apple Watch, but the best story of all might have been overlooked. Well, you never know whether the best story is overlooked or not. You know, the Apple Watch uh, is something that I think several years ago came out and people were sort of saying, well, why do I want one of those? Right. And uh, uh, they have uh, moved in a direction of trying to make it a, a health and fitness uh, supporting device. Uh, and so in the current version of it, before the new one, uh, they had a lot more apps on it that could track your heart rate, track how far you run, track how many steps you had, track how many times you stand up. Uh, they also had a breathing app on there, which could help you kind of remind you to kind of just take a little relaxation minute and take some deep breaths. Uh, and so some mental well-being as well as uh, physical fitness. Uh, the newest version has a much better uh, sensing uh, mechanism within it that has the potential to detect abnormal heart rhythms. We talked about atrial fibrillation last week and right. the importance of it. That's one of the ones that is programmed to be able to detect, and they claim that it's very reliable and very accurate to detect atrial fibrillation. Uh, it turns out that this opens up a can of worms because uh, most of the devices that are wearable uh, made by a various number of manufacturers, Fitbit et al., uh, are not FDA approved. Uh, the FDA has no real jurisdiction and mm. doesn't really look at these things. Uh, but Apple went ahead and uh, had this watch tested and looked at by the FDA, and the FDA says absolutely it's uh, approved for use, uh, but it's not to supplant uh, existing medical technology for preferred testing of heart rhythms like atrial fibrillation and other fast heart rates. So, so in other words, you wouldn't give someone a test using an Apple Watch? Well, I would use it, and I have used other things and other devices out there as far as wearable technology that consumers can directly buy uh, to try to help hone in what is the cause of my racing heart rate or my skipped beats or, or feeling like my heart is beating out of my chest. Mm. And so, uh, you know, the Apple Watch would give you some heart rate numbers. You can look at the log and see, well, how, how high is it getting? Uh, it does have an irregularity detection to try to pick up on atrial fibrillation. That gives you some really good clues because some of these things are so irregular and sporadic, it's really hard to tell. And if I give you a 48-hour monitor, which is what most insurance companies want me to start with because right. it's rather inexpensive, the chances of you having a heart rhythm abnormality within that 48 hours is really low. So now we need to go to the next thing. And so now we have you wear something for 30 days. And maybe you have one episode of that, but it's not really the same thing because it's so random. Right. So these devices do help supplant that and start targeting, mm. hey, maybe this is the frequency of that thing that you're feeling and maybe this is what it is so it might not be absolutely uh, diagnostic but it is pretty helpful so if somebody came to you with an apple watch you would say let me see the stats absolutely hmm. and uh, there have been some apps that uh, and a device that goes on the back of your phone where you could put on uh, your two thumbs on a case uh, that can record an ekg i've actually had a patient bring in several pages of printouts of uh, their heart rhythms during the times they feel things, and, and we've used those too. Doctor, with, with all due respect, I remember my eighth grade uh, health class, you weren't supposed to take either a thumb and have um, and check your pulse because your pulse 
comes through your thumb too, right? Right. Well, that's how they de- so you put your thumb on the sensor, and so it detects it. Oh. So, and and this is just a heart rate detector, but they're 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 really working hard on these types of sensors that can sense through the skin to be able to detect blood glucose. So, say for diabetics, instead of uh, having to prick your finger mm-hmm. multiple times and uh, all the time and check the blood and see what your sugars are, they're working on trying to use. Uh, through the skin detection on what the circulating glucose is to tell you when you need more insulin or or when your sugars are too high or too low. Uh, we've used it in medical uh, terms from a hospital standpoint to detect the oxygen concentration in your blood for forever. They put that thing on your finger and they look at your oxygen saturation. So wow. these types of wearable sensors that might actually be uh, more commonplace uh, like a watch uh, may start playing a bigger, bigger role in terms of uh, keeping track of our own health. Hmm. Interesting. Did you see that story about the uh, aspirin this week? Aspirin, yeah. They, where they said now an aspirin's bad for you. Well, we got We know we we did talk about this a little bit, so let's mm-hmm. clarify. So uh, there's two different types of reasons why you would take an aspirin. Uh, so uh, if you're unfortunate and uh, you've gotten a stent or you've had a heart attack or you have coronary artery disease, uh, that is something we would call secondary prevention. And aspirin absolutely works to prevent a subsequent heart attack. There's no question, there's no doubt, don't stop taking your aspirin. If you've had a heart attack, you have coronary artery disease, or your doctor told you that's why you're taking it. With respect to you and me, you're saying, well, you know, I really wouldn't want a heart attack. I've not had coronary artery disease, right. had an extent. We don't think we have anything like that. That's what we call primary prevention. And that's where this study focuses and says, look, that's not for all comers. And it doesn't necessarily work. It's not a cure-all to prevent that heart attack. Uh, And so the advice is to discuss that opportunity with your physician. As some people are at high enough risk where they will be of benefit from a primary prevention standpoint. uh, But most are not. And the better thing to do is not take the aspirin, but to exercise more, eat better, and pay attention to your cholesterol, your blood pressure, and your blood sugar. That's why he's on the cover of St. Louis Magazine, because he's the best. He's not just a pretty face. Uh, all right, so uh, Michigan is a 19-point favorite against Missouri, or uh, against uh, Nebraska on uh, Saturday. But, but you don't believe in giving points. Well, I think when you talk about saying, I'll bet on my team only if I get points, then you're basically making a statement that my team's going to lose and I'm looking for a moral victory. What about half points, Dr. Lim? So I think... So are you saying this because your team's favored by 19 points? <laughs> no, I've never taken points either. All right, you uh, want to straight so, up. So, so you know, you, you, take you, pay, you, pay believe, you believe your team's going to win or you don't. Now, Nebraska, I think uh, uh, the Vegas line, the problem with it is, as you know, uh, who's going to play quarterback? So do you have the walk-on, who wasn't too bad last week, um, but, uh, you know, clearly not as good as the freshman uh, who started the season. Look at this guy. Right? Sports talk here with Dr. I Michael Lim. So, you know, who's who's going to play quarterback? They uh, yeah. they have, uh, uh, I think they're an aggressive team. They're physical. And, uh, uh, but, and they actually also have a winning record in the big house. Uh, Nebraska does. Oh, they do? They do. Oh. Um, I don't know. So, that, what is it like two and one or something, or one and zero oh or something? Uh, so when Michigan wins on Saturday, it will be five hundred. You want you want to you want to have a little bet here? You want to make sure. a little bet? Sure. What are we going to win? How about we bet one hundred dollars to the other one's favorite charity? Okay. Does that work? That deal. So if Michigan wins, I got to write a check for hundred dollars to your favorite charity. You got it. If if Nebraska wins, you have to write a hundred dollar check to my favorite charity. You got it. How about that? All right. And You've my heard favorite it here, charity people. is the McGraw Millhaven Foundation. No, I'm totally kidding. <laughs> <laughs> when I see that 501c3 paperwork, <laughs> Dr. I'll Michael, be looking for that. There you go. Dr. Michael Lim, cardiologist. Uh, he'll be hosting Sports Talk tonight here on Big 550 KTRS. SSM Health, SLU Hospital, and SLU Care. Doc, thanks for coming in. Enjoy. Take care. Hey,